Should I go? Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. We're going to start with or without you, William. Trey, yes. I'm calling you out by name. Go sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, welcome up here. Jacopo. His name I Cheers. Thank you. All right. My name is Jacopo. Huh? I'm a software engineer. And uh, today I'm going to talk about like, real time application with GraphQL, Node.js, and MQTT. So, just like to have an idea how many of you use GraphQL, knows what GraphQL is. All right. Yeah. <laughs> and what about MQTT? All right. What about Node.js? Yeah. All right. So first of all, like, what are real-time applications are? So real-time application basically is uh, are something that needs to guarantee a, repo a response uh, within a specific time constraint, um, like a response to certain events. And uh, the, time, the time constraints is uh, basically it depends from which kind of application you are developing. So for example, like, uh, um, I don't know, a self-driving car, like, you know, as some response to events that, that how can I say? The, so English is not my language, I'm Italian, so I'm already doing a lot of effort. Uh, but uh, basically, like, self-driving cars, for example, are, they have a really strict time in time of response because, you know, if, uh, you eat someone, it's pretty bad. <laughs> For example, like chat messaging application are real time too, actually, but of course their constraint in terms of time is quite less strict. And I think like a good messaging application um, is just something that send a message from user A to user B within 100 milliseconds. Um, so now, basically, um, how can we make a real-time application? Um, we need to define a protocol that, def that basically allows us to get data down from the server to the client when something in the client change. There are two approach for this. So the first one is pool-based. And we can see, like, we can think like the pool-based approach, um, a, a sort of approach where the client first receive a lightweight message which, in which this message basically just say, hey, you know, there is some new data on the server, can you go fetch it? And there is the push-based approach, which is the one that I use today for my demo. And it's, the, it's basically an approach where the client, at the beginning, we drew, like, gets a full snapshot of the data on the server, and then like, subscribes to, to some Delta updates. And finally, as soon as the data changes on the server, it receives the Delta updates. And today I'm going to do this, um, how, I'm going to show how you using MQTT basically to get the data down from the server to the client. So what GraphQL is? Um, well, GraphQL is simply a, a query language for your API and as, uh, as well as server runtime for executing queries by using a type of system that you define for your data. Basically, GraphQL isn't tied to any specific database or a storage engine, but it's just baked basically to your existing code and data. So why GraphQL? Um, GraphQL mainly because you may have different clients. For example, you can have like a web app, iOS app, and Android app that basically render data differently. And uh, maybe you have as well to care about latency and bandwidth, especially in real-time application and mobile application. Something that basically you need to, f you, you, you can think about GraphQL something like that allow you, uh, allow your each client to query exactly what he needs in the format that he needs. And uh, it, it's a sort of very clean layer of abstraction between your servers and clients that an ad hoc REST approach could never be able to provide. So GraphQL in practice is simply three operations, query to read the data, mutation to write the data, and subscription to, re to receive updates. All right, so now, what is MQTT? MQTT is a pub-based lightweight messaging protocol to use on top of TCP, but as well, it can work on top of WebSocket, so it's, it's pretty cool. Why MQTT? MQTT is ideal basically 
uh, for real-time application, especially if the mobile, and generally like real-time applications are, I mean, most of, most of the chat messaging are uh, for like mobile as well. And the reason why is, is, is really good is because the small sites of their pack the package of uh, the MQTT protocol and um, basically as well a really efficient distribution of information to one from one to many. So this is the concept I designed for using like MQTT with, um, uh, with GraphQL subscription. So there are the clients and uh, the beginning the clients subscribe uh, through an MQTT connection to our MQTT broker. Um, and basically they specify the resource they want to subscribe for, the ID of the resource, and of course the query that uh, needs to be uh, basically run when, um, how do you say? It's basically the GraphQL subscription query that it needs to be run when the data changes so that we respect the format of the data that the client asks for. So once that the client subscribe, uh, let's say that there is another client that uh, do a mutation through our API. Um, once the mutation touch the API, the API basically run the mutation query through the GraphQL engine. It, go uh, it returns basically there is the mutation response and here, the API, basically, what it does is that it publish, um, it, it publish into our PubSub system, which is in this case is MQTT, it publish basically saying, hey, this resource with this ID change, and it return as well the response of the mutation to the, um, to the client that originally asked for the mutation. And that when this happened, MQTT, basically, what it does is that it run the subscription query and the GraphQL engine returned the response of the, the subscription queries and MQTT pushed the data back to the clients. So actually, why not JS? Uh, I'm going to go quickly with this. It's because Node is, well, it's, it's really cool. Uh, everyone likes Node, but uh, it's fun to use it. But the, the most important thing is that it has a very well-maintained GraphQL package and it comes with two amazing uh, models. One is called MQTT connection and one is called MQTT. You can use MQTT connection to, it's an, it's a, you can use it to build your MQTT broker. So you can use like to build your homemade MQTT broker that can use to be, uh, the, the run the subscription queries. And MQTT is uh, an MQTT client so that you can use basically to build a Node.js client app or just for testing. So I have a demo. You can get the code of this demo on my GitHub. But, uh, um, okay. Here, here, I'm gonna hook you up. There you go. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Cheers, cheers buddy. <laughs> Great. The dude. This is, this is awesome. Abides. Yeah. So, the dude abides. There you go. Here you go. So, basically, what I wanna show, first of all, is the implementation of the server. So, we have. <sighs> so fucking small. Uh, I hope it's big enough. Plenty. All right. I only do dad jokes, man. Stop leaving yeah. them open. <laughs> Great. So basically, you me. so basically, this uh, a demo. The server demo. It contains basically a fake database, which is like, it's just for the demo. But you can use any other database, you know, to to actually store your data. You have your uh, MQTT. I start from uh, actually from the schema. So you have your GraphQL schema, and as you can see in the GraphQL schema, I define some types. So this is just example types. You have like user types, and user has some pets, and you has like pets type as well here. And then you have your actual schema, which is defined from uh, you define basically the query, the mutation, and the subscription part. So then we have like the MQTT implementation. So I use this model, it's called um, MQTT connection, as I say. And uh, basically what happened here is that first of all, you start, when you start this, to start like this, an MQTT connection, basically you start just a net server 
And then as soon as the server got a connection, you have a stream, which is a socket, and you basically pass this, uh, this object into an, uh, the MQTT connection, and you got a client. And then here you can do all the um, MQTT operations. So I, I'm not going to the MQTT protocol because it's just like goes a bit out of topic. But um, what I want to show as well is the clients. So we have a two clients, client one and client two. So client one, what it does is that, so you have a subscription query here, and he has a topic, and it defines an MQTT client, it connects to the broker here, this part here, and then like it say, uh, okay, I want to subscribe on this topic, so this is the resource, this is the ID, and, um, sorry, this is, this is the resource and the ID, and this is the query, the GraphQL query want to run when the data change. And as well, client two, what it does here is that it subscribe actually for two query. Query one and query two. Actually, the ID of the second query is different. And as you can see, um, it is basically subscribed for the same resource, client one and client two, but the client one, it asks for um, ID, first name, and last name, and client to ask for ID, first name, and ask as well for the pets, the list of pets, and the name. So I'm just going to show you how it works. I mean, I'm going to show you that it works, actually. So I start. Uh, start server. So here I start. Uh, I think I fucked something with my bash before. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know exactly what I did, but... <laughs> All right, I don't have NPM anymore. <laughs> it's going to be a bit hard to run this. Let me see if I have node at least. All gone. All right, let me source my bash profile. I hope it's going to be back. A lot of working out since the new administration. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, because I installed something with my, I had to. I didn't have to do this before. Install uh, NVM. I did a. I install uh, some stuff before, and I think I. So, let me see what I can do. They don't know anything until you confess. <laughs> uh, it seems there is no this file here, so all right, let me do something. Let me reinstall. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure it's gonna work, but eh. All right, but I don't know if, uh, yeah, I think seems, seems resolved. All right. Yeah. Uh, so, right, npm run, start, server. Yeah, I fix it. That's <laughs> Okay, I need to do it for all my for all the sessions now. So I start the server. Now I start the first client. So as soon as I start the client, the client connect and subscribe for the query. Same here. Took a bit extra time, but 
we'll do with it. All right. npm run uh, start client two. Yeah. I don't know why now it's in pink, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I have all of I need working. Um, there is a graph, so basically here, just to, to let you know, um, I as well expose the GraphQL engine with the GraphQL uh, uh, Express, so I can have a GraphQL, GraphQL, so I can just do run a mutation through the browser and see that the data change and everyone is happy. So. I open my browser, I go localhost 4000 GraphQL. So here's the mutation. Let's say I'm going to run just for fun. I don't know. This. Uh, that is fine. So um, if I run the query, let's say, actually, I'm going to do something. All right, so is it it's very small. Right. So query whatever. So user ABC. So this is the idea of the user. So if I run this, as you can see, the user ABCD, it's me, Jacopo Daeli. So if I do pets. And I say, I want the, the name of the pets. I have a pets called Rocky and Maya. So, OK, but this is just to let you know, just to show you that the data in the database right now, it's, it's this, right? So now what, I want, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to run a mutation, and I'm going to update my user. So my first name is going to be, this is new. This name is new. I'm going to run the mutation, and it's going to say, you know, I updated the user. But let's go back to the terminal. And as you can see, I got the data back from the, I copy paste. Um, I, got, I, I got the data back from the, from the server to the client in the exact format I asked for. As you can see, client one is subscribed for, you know, subscribed for like a uh, query with the, um, the first name and the last name, it got the, first, the new first name, it got the last name. And here, I ask for uh, my first name, but I ask as, as well for the list of pets, and I got the list of pets. So another example is that I'm going to change another user, which only the client number two subscribe for. And uh, I don't remember the idea of the user. I think it's like, yeah. So here, I'm going to say, I'm just going to actually call it Marco, whatever. <laughs> and when I'm going to run this, as you can see, only client two got the data. That's the demo. So just to end, it's, like, it's pretty cool because um, it, like, it works pretty well. Uh, I started working with this like uh, about 10, 15 days ago. Uh, GraphQL subscription are around since, let's say, one year and a half. But there is no real implementation. There is no actually, um, there is no defined design. It's, it's, just like, it's just like one keyword in GraphQL engine. And you know, it's some, you're not going to use it and magically work it. It's, it's not going to magically work. But you need to basically to plug your own pub systems, systems behind so that you, know, you make it happen. And um, I'm not sure this is like a perfect way to do things, because there is no rules. But it works pretty fine for us, a tribe, the company I work for. So good. <laughs> 
So now there is a, there is a friend, uh, Vincent, uh, is gonna is gonna speak about um, GraphQL tools, and uh, so I just leave the words to him. So by the way, this was my first talk in English and my first talk in San Francisco. <laughs> Oh, do you have any questions? Yeah. Awesome. So, what happens um, if you lose the connection and changes, changes happen while you were offline? You come back online, do you get the changes then? All right, yeah. No, if you, if you, lose, the, if you lose the connection, uh, so you uns basically automatically unsubscribe. And uh, if the data change, you won't get the update. But the things you can do is that as, as soon as you reconnect, you refetch the data from the server. So that's, or otherwise what you can do is, um, and I did something similar, um, but I mean, you need, you need to have like the real case to use it because it, it's a bit over-engineered otherwise, is that you create like a persistent queue and you have a kind of pointer. So every time your application connect, it gives the, the latest point, uh, pointer to the Delta update it got. And, the, and the, basically, your system behind just push one by one all the update that are stuck in the queue. Any other question? Um, yeah, just curious, like um, MQTT, how, how it might compare with um, similar um, kind of real-time choice. Similar real-time choices like, like uh, using Firebase or, or Redis, you know, right, yeah. server. Um, yeah. Why choose MQTT? Yeah, yeah, no. So, first of all, like, I, in, in this example, if you want to bring it to scale, you still need a pop sub system like Redis because you want to scale your nodes. So, you want to create a sort of fan out between all your nodes. So, as soon as something changes in one node, all of the other nodes are like informed that you know that something happened in, in your service. So you, we still use Redis, or actually in where I work, we use RabbitMQ to, to do that. And we use basically to scale the MQTT broker. Uh, the reason uh, what what was the other questions? Uh, I guess like just compared with Firebase. All right. More of a Google product, maybe. All right. Uh, the real-time database of Fi Firebase, real-time database, I have no idea. Like, actually, I don't, I, I mean, yeah, why not? I, I like doing my stuff from, but I, the thing is that I don't believe that that system is real, real-time. So that's the thing. So I want to, when I build my services, I want to be sure that what I build is actually working and I know how it works. Behind re, uh, Firebase, I, I, it's a, I use a managed system, okay? But if I want to apply some changes as well, like how can you use GraphQL in, with, with Firebase? Uh, how can you plug the GraphQL engine to, to make like a service that use subscriptions? I, I don't know. I don't think it's even possible. I mean, maybe it's possible, but you know. Other questions? Yep. Oh, good. Thank you. Thanks, man.